Hey everybody! So this, I think, is going to be the last in the series, so you want to be an information architect? And if I've missed anything or if there's something that I went over too quickly, please leave it in the comments below. I would be happy to coach and mentor. If you want me to make a video on it? I certainly can do that as well. So we're going to be continuing on. At this point, you have submitted your resume. So there are a few steps that we're going to go through today that will lead into the offer process. So the first thing that will happen is a very long wait, potentially. Don't be discouraged if you don't hear back from a job that you've applied to. I think the longest it took for a job to get back to me was like six months, which was crazy. Um, at that point, I had found a different job, which is totally fine. If they call you up, just say, sorry, you took too long. Um, so hopefully it doesn't take that long for you, but I'm just giving you a heads up that sometimes the process is quite long, especially if it is very competitive. Also, make sure that you apply as soon as you possibly can, because it sometimes is first come, first serve. Once they get so many applicants, they're just going to go through and pick somebody. And if you didn't get yours in, if you were waiting until something was perfect, you might not actually get into the considerations. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is as you are waiting, if you are going and applying to a lot of different places, which you should be, uh, don't wait for just one job to get back to you. Apply, 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 apply. And once... Hopefully you get many callbacks. The other thing is while you're waiting for a callback, make sure you are preparing your dossier or your project portfolio. So what is that? It could be something that you post on LinkedIn. It's something from GitHub. It could be something that you have on your blog where you have all of your research or all of your um, project data sets. Make sure you can share whatever you are putting into that project portfolio. So. Why do that? Um, quite often, a lot of tech jobs are going to ask you for samples of your work or to actually ask you, how would you do this? And you can actually show them examples, which is really a strong statement. It will also make you look very professional and very prepared. So if you have something already put together, by the time the, the HR people reach out to you, you can then say, this is great, thank you, here are my dates of availability because that's probably what they're asking you about. Oh, and also, can you please pass on my dossier or my project uh, portfolio to the hiring manager? So the people you will be talking to most likely in this, in this sequence is there's usually three to four stages once you get a callback. So the first is the callback. That's usually um, the HR person that is just contacting you to find out when you can either come in or schedule you know, a Zoom call uh, for the rest of the interview process. They also might ask you about your salary requirements. I'm going to save my salary requirements conversation for the very end of this video because there's a whole bunch of it. But just keep in mind right now, make sure you do your research before you answer this question. First of all, if they are asking you, how much do you make right now? Many states have made that question illegal. So they are not even allowed to ask you that question. Second of all, don't feel pressured to give an answer at that point. Uh, if you need to say, and these are perfectly acceptable things to say, you know what, I, I, I can see a lot in this job description, but I would feel more comfortable answering that question once I talk to the hiring manager and understand the full responsibilities of this role. This makes you sound very put together, makes you sound very professional, and it's perfectly acceptable. You're not rushing into anything. Um, something else they might say is, oh, there are no negotiations on salary because we have done extensive research and we already know what we're willing to pay for for this. That's okay. Don't be worried if they say that. You just have to make a judgment call once they tell you what that number is. And so if they say that, you can at that point say, great, can you please let me know what that number is so I can see if it aligns with what I was expecting. Easy thing to say. If they show their cards, then you can assess it on yours. Uh, so more on that later. So most of the time they will ask you, what are your salary requirements? They will ask you, um, what is your availability to start? 
if you do not have a lot of responsibility at your current job, you can usually give a two week notice. If you are somebody that is highly relied on and you have a lot of stuff riding on you as an individual where you are working, at least a three week, if not longer, is, is more acceptable. Another thing the HR person might ask you is, are you willing to relocate? Um, be very honest with that answer, be very upfront. And sometimes that's where the conversation stops. There's ways to not relocate, whether you um, fly. Again, all of this is a normal circumstance. It's not sure what happens today in this world we live in. But if you need to fly in and see the team maybe once a month or you know maybe every three months or maybe you need to be on call at certain hours, whatever it is, um, there are ways to get around the relocation and still physically see the team that you might be working with if that is a requirement. So make sure that you ask that before everything gets shut down. So the next one you're going to have is most likely a phone interview. Sometimes they're more like video chat. So this is your time to shine. So make sure that your personality is there, that you're really energetic, you're confident. It means be yourself. And just be very confident in the way that you present yourself because you should be confident about your skills. Uh, most likely you're going to get questions about team fit, how you would work with different teams, um, how the business is operating. So if you need to understand how the team is funded or how decisions are made on which projects that you work on, those are great questions for the hiring manager. Now, the hiring manager is not always going to be the person that you report to eventually, um, but they most often are. They are usually people that understand the tech. So this is the time to ask technical questions if you have them. So this is for them to just get a feel for you, to understand a little bit about you. All managers do it differently. A good question to ask during this process is, first, would I be reporting to you? And second, how big is your team? And third, what's your management style? This one, I'm a really big fan of. Anytime somebody asks me this, I really admire them because they are not only thinking of the job, but they are also thinking of living and breathing that job. This is where, please do your research on the company. Um, I have had too many candidates that didn't actually know much about the company, you should probably know what the company does if you're applying to it. And it's okay if you don't know all the nitty gritty, but just be prepared with some questions about the company itself. So if that goes well, that's when you will probably get a panel of interviews. A panel usually is not a tribunal of a bunch of people. They will be physical interviews. You'll get lunch, they'll have people walking around with you, you'll get to see the buildings. Again, that if, if that is physically happening right now. Um, if not, it will all be um, sequences of calls uh, throughout the day. And usually they don't have a lot of people. It's usually between like two, three, four people. Um, and they sometimes are structured where they will be, um, one group will be tasked with finding out what your drive is. Another group will be tasked with understanding your project management skills, right? So they'll have like different criteria that they're gonna be uh, talking to you about. And then there's some interviews that could just be very conversational. Be confident, be calm, be you know, have assurance in yourself. Um, remember, you're going to have that, that project uh, portfolio with you so you can show them things. Make sure you're educating people. Sometimes when you're in information architecture, you are doing work that is totally different than what that current employer is expecting. And sometimes they don't know the terminology. Sometimes they don't really understand what an information architect does educate them. I know it sounds a little strange that you'd be educating the people that are assessing you for a job, but it happens a lot more than you would anticipate. Come with lots of ideas. People love to hear ideas. Even if the company might already be doing whatever you're talking about, it shows that you have drive and you want to improve things. Also, make sure you come with questions. 
even if you don't really have questions. So come prepared with generic questions. So tell me about your culture here. Tell me about some of the big hurdles that you face. What are some of the most common personas that you have? Um, what are the things that you love the most about the job? All of those kind of questions, and it's totally acceptable that you ask them repeatedly to different interviewees because you're going to get different answers from them. And that is actually a good way to understand if they are a good fit for you. It's not just a one-way street. You're also interviewing them. It's also f totally fine to write or type notes as you're being interviewed so that if you do have questions later on, um, legitimate ones after you've had time to think, uh, you can reach out to them and ask those questions. So you will often have somebody's email from the interview process, whether it's just the HR person or it is the hiring manager. If you have questions, send it to them. That is something that also makes you look good and it will help you understand if you really understand the job well. The other thing is I know a lot of people um, send thank you notes um, after their interview. There's nothing wrong with that at all. Um, I would say doing that and also saying, oh yeah, and if, if you needed some more material, here's my project portfolio. And also here are some questions that came up in the interview that I, I don't think um, I, got, I got answers for. All great things. It, it shows that you were engaged, you were listening, you have a lot of interest and investment in, in that job. So between the panel interview and the actual job offer coming in can be a very long time. Don't get discouraged. In fact, sometimes they might ask you to come in and interview just with one or two people um, because they wanted to get a better feel for you. Don't be worried. Don't be discouraged by that. That's a good sign that they want to continue to keep talking to you. So let's speed up. So now you got an offer. They're willing to give you an offer. Great. First of all, everything you talk about for your offer needs to be in writing. Do not ever take anything for granted. So the things that should be in your offer are how much vacation time you get, if there's any um, bonuses or if there's any um, non-monetary perks um, to your job, whether that is, you know, extra vacation days if you, you know, do certain performance or it could be um, anything that you are negotiating with, right? So when you go in, to the salary conversation. I already said, do your research, go onto Glassdoor, go onto all the websites and try to find as much information as possible. The other thing is money is not the only thing companies can offer. There are stock options. There are additional um, types of insurance. I know some offer like pet insurance. Um, some give perks like free gyms. So you have to kind of add up all of these different additional perks to understand that that offsets potentially a salary that might be slightly lower than you were expecting. That said, always go in and know your worth. What is your breaking point? If you desperately need a job and you just need to get your foot in the door, I mean, we all have to do what we have to do, right? As my mother always says, but also understand that you might be signing up for a dead end job. So be very careful. Um, ways to get around this. Um, I know a lot of companies right now are just not able to pay a certain amount because of the financial turmoil the world is in right now. Some strategies around that are, like I said, getting additional perks that don't necessarily have a monetary value to the employer or they are something that you really value. Um, that's one, one approach. Another approach is saying, okay, I understand it's a really tough time, but I appreciate that you're willing to take a chance on me. So let's negotiate and say that I will get a 10% bonus um, after nine months or after a year of working here if such and such criteria is met, right? So you can come up with ways of, of getting in. There's also sign-on bonuses. So 
don't be afraid to negotiate. Don't worry about upsetting somebody. Um, but I'm just making sure that you are all empowered to go out and make sure that you get what you're, you're, you're deserving of. Okay, that was a lot. But this is the last video, so I wanted to, to make sure I got as much in as possible on all of this. And I wish you well. If you're looking for a job, ugh, good luck. And if you need any help, I am here for you. Um, just leave something in the comments below or go and find me on LinkedIn. So with that, thank you very much and I'll catch you next time.